Now that we can negate entire functions, and um, we can express functions in both sum of product form, um, which is the in terms of the min terms, um, and product of sum form, now I want to define for you max terms. Um, so let's just recall the definition of min terms. Um, if min terms were a product of literals, like a, b naught, c, then uh, the max term are the sum of each literal but complemented. Okay, so in other words, the way these relate to each other is if we have a min term, any min term, and um, the complement of that min term will be the max term by De Morgan's. Okay, so remember that the min terms look something like um, a, b, not c, right? So if this is the min term, then that means that the max term that corresponds to this min term would be this min term complemented and we apply De Morgan's on it, this gives us a naught or b naught naught or c, which is a naught or b or c naught. Okay, so this would be the max term, sorry, this is a capital M and this is a lowercase m that corresponds to this min term. Okay, so um, that means functions can be expressed in either min term or max term form. So let me write out a few of these for you so we can um, start to go in between the forms. So if we have inputs, I'm, I'm just doing all these examples with um, three input functions. So for inputs are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, then the min terms would be, um, min term zero is a naught, b naught, c naught. Min term one is a naught, b naught, c. Min term two is a naught, b, c naught, and so on. The max terms are given by basically applying to Morgan's on all the min terms. So this result max term zero would be A or B or C. Max term one would be A or B or C not. Max term two would be A or B not or C. So basically, wherever you see a complement on the min term, you have a not complement on the max term, and wherever you see an and, you change it to an or. So we're basically just applied to Morgan's to all the min terms to give us the max terms. And the reason why they're defined this way is that um, you're going to get the minimum result if you multiply all these together, right? Because anytime there's a zero, you're just going to get zero for the product. But you're going to get the maximum result if you add all these together, right? If you or all these together, because that means anywhere you have a one that's going to be represented um, on the output here. So let's just go ahead and um, finish these. So this is m min term three would be a naught b c. So that makes max term three a or b naught or c naught. Min term four is a b naught c naught. That makes max term four a naught or b or c. Min term five is a and b naught c. That makes max term five a naught or b or c naught. Min term six is a b c naught. That makes max term six a naught or b naught or c. And finally, min term seven, a, b, c, gives the max term seven, a naught or b naught or c naught. 
So now that we have all the min terms and the max terms written out, um, suppose we are given some function. So let's just suppose that our function f is um, going to have an output of 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so this is just an example for a particular f. So um, if we were to express f as um, a sum of products, so in min term form, in min term form, which is a sum of products, f would be, while well, I look everywhere we have um, a 1, and I'm going to circle that min term. So f is 1 at the first row, f is 1 at the second row, it's 1 at this fifth row, and it's 1 at this row here. So my sum of min terms is going to be, here's my sum, I put in a little m, and then I just write all these subscripts. So the zeroth, the first, the fourth, and the sixth. Okay, now if I want to write this in max term form, in max term form, so in other words, product of sum form, f would be, instead of the sum, since we're not adding all of the terms together, we're multiplying, I've got this like, it looks like a capital pi kind of, and then instead of the little m, I'm going to use a big M, and now I look for um, where basically wherever I have a zero. So I have a zero at min term two, I have a zero, I'm sorry, max term two, max term three, and max term five and max term seven. So I'm going to um, make a list of the max terms, basically wherever I don't have a positive min term. And the reason why these are opposite is because this is the negative of this. So if I want to express the exact same function, I'm basically going to write the min term expansion is going to be wherever I have f equals one, the max term expansion is going to be wherever I have f is equal to zero. So these numbers are going to be two, three, five, and six. And this is the exact same function, it's just written in two different forms. Uh, we should probably prove to ourselves how do we know that these are actually equivalent. This is equal to the max term form 2, 3, 5, 6. Um, so we can prove this to ourselves by doing the expansion. So the min term expansion, if I wrote out all of these literals, um, would be, let's see, I will start with if f is equal to my sum of min terms, min term 0, plus min term 1, plus min term 4, plus min term 6, then um, that means that this is where f is equal to 1. So that m implies that at min terms um, 2, min term 3, min term 5, and min term 7, this is where f is equal to 0. So in other words, f naught is going to be equal to the sum of min terms m2 plus m3 plus m5 plus m7. Okay, great. So if I have my um, the complement of my f function expressed as all a sum of all the min terms wherever um, f is equal to zero, then I know that f is going to be the complement of this. Um, so in other words, if I want to like complement this and complement this, then I'm going to get my regular f back out. So f is going to be this thing, m2 plus m3 plus m5 plus m7 complemented. So I'm going to use this complement to apply De Morgan's, 
and this is going to give me um, M2 complement anded with M3 complement anded with M5 complement and anded with M7 com complement and we know by the definition of how min terms and max terms relate to each other that um, these are actually a product of literals, right? So we could put in the A, B's, and C's in here, and we can apply De Morgan's to all of those. Just as a kind of a shorthand, um, I know that this is defined as max term two, this is defined as max term three, this is max term five, and this is max term six. So if these are all being multiplied together, um, I can look at my list of max terms. Max term two is A or B naught or C. Max term three is A or B naught or C naught. Max term five is A naught or B or C naught. Max term six is, I'm sorry, this should be seven. Max term seven is A naught or B naught or C naught. And now I have this is in um, product of some form of F. Okay, so um, let me know if you have questions about going back and forth between min term and max term form. So um, the easiest way really is to, um, if you're given the min term expansion, your max term expansion is going to be all of the other terms, right? So if we have 0, 1 in our min terms, we'll have 2, 3, and we won't have 0 and 1, and so on. And then just remember the different notation that max term is going to be the sum, little m, and then the list of min terms that give us f equals 1. The max term form is going to be this capital pi kind of with a capital M, and then the list of all of the terms that give us f, at us f is equal to zero, since these guys are kind of the complement of each other. So let me know if you have questions about that. We can do some more um, examples later in the module.